My name is Ariel Jaffledge, and this is the Dayton International Peace Museum.
seeing here is called a labyrinth. It's similar to a maze, but in a maze, you're gonna have to choose to go left or right to get to the end of the maze. And in a labyrinth, you just go straight through and it's just one path all the way to the end. Have you heard of the golden rule? The golden rule is to treat others the way that you would like to be treated. This version of the saying originates from the Christian religion, which is one of the most practiced religions here in America, but there's many more here in America and also all around the world. One of the first times historians found a version of the golden rule was actually in ancient Egypt. And the story of our quilt shows this idea and how it's from many different areas all around the world and their version of that saying and how it all comes together. Janet McTavish made these quilts based on a dream that she had following a terrorist attack in New York City on September 11, 2001, by a group of people from the Muslim religion. Janet did not like how so many Americans were now treating all people of Muslim religion or cultures in America because of how they were portrayed in the attack by the media, even though they weren't connected to the extreme group, and hoped to find a way to bring everyone back together again. Judaism, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Hinduism, this is the sum of duty. Do not do to others what would cause pain if done to you. Islam, none of you believes until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. Taoism, regard your neighbor's gain as your own gain, and your neighbor's loss as your loss. Sikhism, don't create enmity with anyone, as God is within everyone. A Native American proverb, Do not wrong or hate your neighbor, for it is not he who you wrong, but yourself. Zoastrianism, Do not do unto others whatever is injurious to yourself. In her dream, she was walking barefoot on a path of sharp rocks. Along the way, she would pick up rocks with words that had negative meanings on them, like hate, fear, anger, and lying. As she was walking, picking up the rocks, she would pass by groups of people from different religions. And as she would pass, they would be very rude to her and point out how she was different from them and how she didn't belong. She kept walking collecting more and more rocks, getting heavier and heavier in her arms, and continuously passing by different groups of people who treated her poorly. Eventually, she got to a point where the scenery changed. It was a beautiful oasis full of beautiful flowers, grass, and a waterfall. Janet heard a voice tell her to drop her load of rocks, and she did. Relieved of the burden, she stayed in that place for a while resting and enjoying the scenery. Eventually, the voice came back and told her to continue walking. This path was new. It was a beautiful path of grass and flowers. This time, the flowers she saw had words that were opposite from the first path. These words were things like kindness, happiness, peace, and love. As she walked, she passed by the same groups of people and this time, they were very welcoming and kind to her as she passed. Think 
about the differences. She was the same person on the path visiting the same religions, but she was treated differently based on the focus of the path. Why do you think that was? On the first path, with the rocks, negativity was the focus. Each individual group did not want to accept her because she was not exactly like them. The second path, however, her path in each group was focused on the positive and the things they had in common. Now more than ever, we're experiencing two very different groups of people who are focusing on the differences of the opposite group and trying to make the opposite group bad or wrong instead of trying to come together with common goals. We can all find common ground no matter how different we are. If we can all come together on our common goals, the world would be a much more beautiful place. We also have to remember that each person that we meet is unique and an individual and we should make sure that we're treating them how they would also like to be treated. Some people like to give hugs, but others may just prefer a friendly hello or handshake. And some people like to play with others all the time, while others may just want to play by themselves. These are all things that we can learn as we get to know the people around us. There are many ways to do things, but that doesn't make one way right or wrong. It just makes it different. So while we can find things in common, we also are very unique, and that's truly what makes a beautiful world. All right, so now that you learned all about the golden rule and how to treat each other with kindness and respect, we are going to make a little activity. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna get a construction paper. You're gonna hole punch each of the corners. Your teacher will help you make handprints and also write down a way that you like to be treated or something you like to do for others to know that you appreciate them. You are going to glue those each to your paper. So once these are all completed, you will tie them together with some yarn or string and you are going to have your own classroom kindness quilt. So once you have that put together, then you can add additional pieces together. Just like this. like that. I hope you all enjoyed our talk today about the golden rule and learned how to come together on a common goal and always lead with love and kindness. I hope to see you one day at the Dayton International Peace Museum. Bye for now.